We finally decided that the only way we were ever going to get to make a movie was to make a motorcycle movie because we could get backing because they couldn't lose money for the amount of money we were, make, we were spending. We were only spending uh, $340,000 and they could sell it to television for half a million dollars. So there was no threat to them as far as making their money back, even if it was bad. Yes. And then we took that from there and then developed so that, I mean, obviously it's not a motorcycle movie. What was the most important thing you felt you had to say in the film? Um, well, I wanted, I wanted to basically make a movie about what was happening in America at that moment. Uh, most films that were made in Hollywood, I, I can't really think of a movie that was made during the time that made a social commentary on what was going on, that was made during that time. Yes, they make them about the Civil War, they make them about slavery, or they make them about the Korean War, but I mean, uh, something that was really going on at that moment. Uh, very few people go out and make a movie about that, right. and especially in Hollywood. There are two things which crop up continuously in the film. Uh, one is the fact that the two main characters in the film, from start to finish, smoke pot the whole time. The other thing is that they both continuously talk about their stake in the future because, in fact, they've just got a large sum of money. Now, first of all, can I ask you about the drugs? Because we must get this out of the way. They do smoke pot from start to finish, and there are several sequences in the film where they either invite somebody else to smoke or they discuss how, in fact, it can, I, I think one of them says, it can make the day look a whole lot different. I yeah. think that it shows you a new way of looking at the Right, day. Yeah. now, okay, now, so, so to people who accept that pot smoking is not harmful and not dangerous and is not addictive and does not dull uh, or impair the senses, this is not going to be very, very revolutionary. It's not going to be upsetting. But what now? What is your answer to the hordes of people, and there must have been, and there are going to be, the hordes of people who are going to say, this is a, a, a false philosophy. These people are going to become addicts. Well, first of all, it would be unrealistic of these two boys in America not to smoke pot. I mean, first of all, they deal. I mean, they make their money at the beginning through a criminal act of smuggling hard narcotics. Uh, they only test the narcotics by sniffing it. They, you don't see them using that narcotic. They, that's their device to get money, uh, which goes into a reference that, like, perhaps all of us are pushers in one way or another. Perhaps all of us are involved in criminal acts of one kind or another, whether it's the Wall Street banker who spends 80% of his time trying to figure out how he's going to get his money into a Swiss bank or how he's going to cheat the government out by creating a false company and then closing the company down and, and saving money. So he's a criminal, he's a pusher. In fact, all of us are pushing something. Uh, the point is, hopefully, that, that what we push uh, will be, rather than taking out of the land till the land blows away, that we're replenishing, that we're giving to the society or that we're giving to perhaps 50 years from now. Yes, but smoking pot may be the, the scene of a small group in the States, and I'm sure that it, within those groups it is very prevalent, but not everybody accepts that this is here to stay, or is indeed that it is right that it should be here to stay. Well, yeah, but, uh, I mean, these characters in this movie would smoke grass, and I think that, like, I would say that 80% that of, of, of your high school students in the major cities in the United States have smoked grass, and... Uh, I wish it had stopped with grass because a lot of them are now on amphetamines and speed and hard narcotics and using needles, which is insanity. I mean, it's just insanity. The life expectancy of a person shooting speed is like five years. And I've seen little girls, 13 years old, beautiful, lovely bodies who two years later, a year later, look like they came out of Dachau. They've lost their teeth, their hair is falling out. And uh, uh, I didn't, when I was in high school, like, we were all terrified of... Of, of needles, and now there doesn't seem to be any fear of needles. These kids seem to be using needles. Grass marijuana is not, is not habit forming. And uh, the government reports in England, the government reports in the United States, uh, Look Magazine, Life Magazine, I mean, it's becoming like a joke. I mean, it is less harmful for you than a cigarette. It is not addictive like a cigarette. It is certainly less harmful for you than alcohol. And uh, the fact that it leads to harder drugs, which is the great cry of the bourgeois, it leads to harder drugs is because a pusher, a dealer, can't make any profit really off grass. I mean, you can buy enough grass for $50 to last you for a year. 
but he can get you addicted on amphetamines, he can get you addicted on methadrine, on heroin, and these things become $10 a shot. So like you're up to five shots a day, maybe 10 shots a day, you're into a lot of money. And uh, so like he addicts you. Yes, but surely an awful lot of people who potentially might have liked the film are going to be alienated simply because the two characters are addicted to smoking grass. Well, then they, they, they should be, well, I mean, the film basically is about people who are narrow-minded, isn't it? I mean, we're killed by people who are narrow-minded. Uh, perhaps even our characters themselves are narrow-minded in a strange way. Uh, so I, I just have to relate again to the government reports that this is indeed not a harmful drug. Now, the cocaine is. Uh, uh, the acid can be. Uh, but even under certain circumstances, the acid isn't. But we don't say anything good about the acid. The trip in the, in the movie is a bummer. I mean, I don't think anybody would want to take acid after they see the trip in the movie. No. Uh, grass, yes, they might want to. I didn't make it uh, as a pronouncement to like uh, go out and smoke grass, but I know that that's what these people did and uh, do. <laughs> And <laughs> do you, uh, let, let me ask you this, of course you play uh, one of the main characters, do you, to what an extent do you personally identify with his philosophy? Is it your own philosophy? My character? Yes. Uh, well, I play the antagonist in a sense in the movie and I, I don't identify with him personally. Uh, I, mean, I identify with him as a mass, the mass that goes and fights the war for Captain America when he says there's a war to fight and he goes and fights the war. Uh, uh, I identify with him as uh, Pancho Sanchez is in relation to uh, Don Quixote uh, or the squire to the knight. I think people? of myself as a knight, frankly, and not <laughs> the squire, but... <laughs> and are also, they good people, though, you see, or are they, or are they misled people? Well, I what think that, they? like, they're as good as their leaders, don't you? I think people are as good as their leaders. Uh, I envision in the movie a, a, a world without leaders, uh, a world where everybody is clothed, housed, transported, and uh, what have I left out? Fed <laughs> equally and with no problem because of advanced technology. The characters also in the <coughs> film talk a lot about money and that one gets the feeling that they think that perhaps money might be the answer to their problems, their stake in the future. But how are you personally going to react now that you're in the big league, now that you're going to make a lot of money? Well, <sighs> yeah. It's very rough. You see, like, it seems like the farther you run away from the establishment... Uh, the nearer you get. <laughs> that, that you, it's like you're on an elastic band and suddenly uh, you run so far away that they snap you right back into the middle and you're suddenly in the middle and you're surrounded by the establishment. And they're patting you on the back and loving you and pulling you to their bosom until you're no longer useful to them. And then they toss you away again.